Fantastic Four rumors. Everyone thinks that you would make an incredible invisible woman, that John would make a great Mr. Fantastic. Where do we stand? Are you guys fans of the MCU? Could we see you take on these roles? Well, I know nothing. <laughs> so I'll just say that. But I, do, but, I mean, <laughs> I never know how to answer these questions. Um, <laughs> no one has approached me about the invisible woman. So we'll just leave it as that. I have would not been approached about the invisible woman. <laughs> Would um, you be interested? I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm always very touched by the fan casting. I think that's cool. And what about Quiet Place 3? Are you going to be in that? Are you not? I can't Is say. It... I can't say. Um, I can't say. I can say nothing. Um, uh, it's a... Uh, no, I'm, next question. Can't wait for Quiet Place 3, though. So excited. <laughs> I'll tell your story. about revenge. I have to tell you, the reviews for this show, I don't know if you guys have seen or if you even pay attention to that, but people are calling it magnificent, incredible. How do you react to that? It was so beautifully shot. Like, I cannot get over how gorgeous oh, this show is. <laughs> thank you. We think it's beautiful to yeah. look at as well. I think it's so stunning. And we had such an incredible cinematographer in Arnau. And it's, it's a true epic you know, wide scope love story. And it's 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 so beautiful and I'm thrilled people love it. Yeah. Obviously you sort of make these things in the great hope that they're gonna be absorbed and loved um, in the way that they were made. It was made with so much love and so much care. And I knew when I read it, it was something extraordinary. Will you help me? Can you shoot? I have to. Oh, you'll have to. What was so fascinating to you guys about this story and about this time period and, and to make a Western after we've seen so many Westerns? Like it was Cornelia and Eli. It was the, yeah. it was the, the story between those two that really, that's, that's what got me. And every script I got, you know, I kept turning the pages wanting more and more. Mm -hmm. And, but it was, it was definitely the story between Cornelia and Eli that really, really got me hooked in. Sure. Yeah, the the love story was so beautiful. I, I, I'd i never done a Western before. Chaska had done a couple of Westerns, but um, I'd never played in that sort of mythic story space before and I wanted to. I grew up watching Westerns and I felt this one was fresh. I felt this one was carving out new space for itself. Um, yeah, I thought it was as violent as it was witty and yet it was moving. And so you just never knew where it was going or where it was going to take you or how you were going to feel about it. You touch on, on the violence and it is, there's a lot of violence in this show and a lot of action. What did you guys do to prepare? I mean, Emily, are you a good archer? No. <laughs> I think I'm good at faking archery. I think I get I think I think we're very and a very good fake arch archeryist or whatever yeah. you call them. I bet you're pretty good. Um I don't know if I could hit a target very well. I mean I think I hit a couple of targets when I was um learning, but I'm sure I missed many more. But I think it's just about making sure it looks convincing and so as long as it looked convincing then that's great. Someone kill my child. No, I'm gonna kill him. Emily, you really do play a woman on a mission. I mean, she's trying to get revenge. She's trying to hunt down someone who killed her son. How did being a mother in, in real life help prepare you for this role? Honestly, I feel most parents will feel like me. I know Chaske feels this as a father, like you become a parent and your whole heart cracks open to so much. And it's, it's, I think it it has opened my eyes to so much. And I think, look, I don't tend to draw on my own experiences when I play a part, or maybe I do subconsciously, but I'm not aware of it. I'm not aware of going, oh, well, this is what I've been through. So I'm gonna inject that into this character. I just had such huge empathy for her plight and the tragedy of her loss and the identity that's been stripped from her and I, I, I thought she was so relentless in this pursuit of revenge and I understood it. I guess I just understood it so deeply. I've never been through something as traumatic, you know, touch wood is what she has gone through. Um, but I loved that um, relentless um, fever she had for it. It was like magic. Oh 
Only this afternoon, you were tied up there. I was lying down over there. You guys brought up the relationship between Eli and Cornelia earlier. What was the key to making that chemistry feel so real? Well, it helps yeah. that she's super nice. And, you know, <laughs> really a nice person. <laughs> that helps us a lot. She does <laughs> seem like the nicest. Listen, it's much harder when you have to conjure it up. It is, it is it's not as fun. It's like when it's effortless, because Chaska is a doll and he's a brilliant actor, it's sort of wonderful. And we did drink some tequila and we drank some wine and we had some fun as well. That's the key, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a fun behind the scenes fact. Emily, you don't do a lot of television. I'm curious why you wanted to jump in to this and, and into this television world? I wanted to do like a long form storytelling for so long, just to go on that journey with someone. And the best material you, we often find is in television. I mean, it's just where all the juicy, incredible material is. So I'd been jonesing to do something on TV for a long time. And this came along and blew my hair back. I thought it was so, it was just exactly what I'd been waiting for. 